Okay. So, hello everyone, and I'm Bo. So, I think most of you guys know me already, and uh, maybe two thirds of the people here. Uh, the topic is, as usual, is the interpreting human movement with the indoor IF signals, and previously called passive Wi Fi radar. Let me just change the name. <laughs> Okay, this is the general, general background. First, we have the ubiquitous extent of the RF signal in the indoor scenario now. For the Wi Fi, we have the wireless charging signal, and also have the Zigbee, you have the Bluetooth, lots of signals. So, probably you can um, use these signals for something beyond the communications. And also, we have the signals will reflect in the non free space propagation environment. That means they have lots of multipath. And also, we are looking at the reflections from the human body, especially moving human body. Uh, even tiny movement of the test move because of uh, caused by the respiration. So we think potentially we have a wide range of the applications based on this detection. Mm. So basically, it is a radar system that uses the communication signals or some other indoor value signals for, as an illuminator. Uh, to be honest, uh, in the current days, people uh, love into lots of some other signal processing method, not only radar signal processing, they're also using the parameter estimation theories to get to the angle and the very high accuracy timing estimation to get more information. But in this uh, presentation, I'm mainly focused on the radar, especially a Doppler radar system. So here's the top level picture. We have the signal. From the signal, we can extract mainly three parameters time, frequency, and uh, space. Space uh, uh, here means the angle information. And uh, based on these three parameters, we can understand when the things happened, where the thing happened, what happened. Is uh, here, we, today's talk, we, talk about, we, uh, we, we have more information about what has happened. We to use a micro doctor to interpret what has happened about the way our, our detected signal. And, uh, and if we combine all of the when, where, and what, we can try to use the machine learning method to identify who is doing this. And potentially, with this information, we can get lots of uh, applications for healthcare, smart environment, uh, security, human machine interactions, probably for the entertainment. <coughs> and this picture shows which part of the signal we are looking at and uh, what information, how we extract information here is that general in like receivers in, for communication system, like especially for the digital communication. We have a high frequency signal, we don't convert it and digitize it and do the uh, physical layer processing and translate uh, the, the signal into the bit stream and have the high layer protostock and go to the application layer. It is generally for the modern various communication. But actually, we're only looking at the signal right after the ADC and before the physical layer processing. This, this is the, the part, the signal we are looking at and to extract the time and uh, uh, angle and uh, frequency information. And here is that we use the Doppler radar as an example. I have shown this picture for lots of times. We get the signal, we get the pre-processing. Uh, which includes sometimes the reference signal reconstruction or DSI filtering, and got a cross ambiguity analyzing, and do the process processing that meaning to clean the uh, to clean the interference and to do the CFR and to extract the Doppler information and the plot with the time timestamps and we can try to use this uh, plot as a signature to interpret the human movement, and we can do the very high resolution. Doppler extraction based on to, to increase the integration time of the cross ambiguity processing. And here is the range actually. In the traditional radar processing, uh, the range of resolution is deeply dependent on the uh, bandwidth of signal. That means by using the indoor communication signal, we have very, very low range resolution. It's very difficult to use to, en to understand the human movement. So we ignore the most indoor case. We ignore this ranging information in the most indoor case if using the normal bandwidth processing. But actually, currently, people developed more and more signal processing method to estimate the the, 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 the signal signal delay. Mm -hmm. And and the, the recent paper, people claim that they can estimate the time delay into the nanosecond level. <laughs> and here is the. First example, I think some of people already seen this video before. Let's show it again, just to, to uh, just tell the story. 
and uh, from the beginning. Here, the slow wall detection, we have that one room with the people working in the, in the room. We set up our, here we have the one Wi-Fi AP as an illuminator, and we set up a system outside of this room, and the wall is 20, we have 22 centimeter brick wall. And here the people is moving, and uh, here is the zoom in of the signal. Here is the zoom in of the, of the screen. You can see, we track the people's moving up and down, and uh, to log this moving information. Here, the, this one is the intensity of the detection. And here is the Doppler, Doppler spectrum uh, detected real time. And uh, yeah, we'll go to the next slide. Here is the, also we can based on the frequency Doppler detection. If we detect the Doppler from a different angle in this room, actually, you can see here. <laughs> or can we can we can like to we can we can we can know the very small movement of very in the very short time slots and based on the based on the direction of your body movement we accumulate each vectors you can calculate the, the trees of the movement actually compare with the like the bandwidth based the cross correlation the accuracy is very high but we have one drawback here is that we have to know the initial start point of the people, otherwise we cannot calculate. But actually, this problem is already resol resolved in theory. There are lots of paper to, call, to talk about. To use at least four different uh, receivers in different angles, we can calculate back the initial point of the moving people. <coughs> but we haven't, done, we haven't done this in our real work. And here is the full war human body action videos I had done in the ninth floor. So it's just, I think some people have already seen this video before. I can just do different <coughs> movement. So the system is behind this wall, and I show the I show the videos in the big screen to see the to see the doctor signatures here for different uh, movement. Yeah. So so actually, this is a result I've done in UCL uh, like two years before, I think, using the using the micro doppler detection based on Wi-Fi signal. And here is like this. Lots of people now look at the micro doppler and do, do lots of simulations and they try to build this kind of stick, uh, stick model skeleton and to try to simulate the reflection from different uh, part of the body. And ideally they should have the different micro doppler from different part of the body. This is the ideal simulation result. Uh, but actually, in the in in the practical world, um, we can't get that that detailed information. That's based on lots of my information, based on two 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 point four gigahertz signal. We can't get that detailed information. Here, I showed three different uh, experiment results. This this one is done by the Washington University. They using also using Wi-Fi signal to extract this 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 like frequency shift. Um, based on different gesture. And this one is done by, <coughs> by MIT group. And they extract the angle information rather than Doppler information. And this is my result to detect the walking people, walking forward and backward, forward and backward. If we zoom in some part of this result, we can see the, the detailed torso movement based on like a Doppler here. And uh, yeah, this is experiment result. We haven't published any paper because uh, I stopped my work a little bit. <laughs> And now it's like uh, in my last uh, uh, presentation here, I mentioned that we can use the, the, the Wi-Fi emission from a laptop to detect the human hand movement. And I refined this system in last year, and we, just, we, we got two sensors on the corner of the laptop, and we just uh, ADC the signal and processing and display on the, on the, on the computer screen. And we can recognize basically five different gestures it is a very small library, but we can extend the library little by little. And I will give some new result here. Here is my system. Uh, okay, where is my mouse? Your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> top, oh, I just saw it. I don't know. Could you... It's on that screen. Okay, on that screen. Okay, like this. Maybe go on to the other screen? No, no okay, that's here. So here is like this. I okay, have I have the dipole folded antenna here. You can see I move my finger like for once. Give it one pause, another one. Give it another pause. 
So based on the, we can detect this movement, and then as I said, I call this technology as air gaze. We can use this, we can use this technology for very simple to control some software, and they develop this software quickly into one night. And for example, again to, to like to like you can click the button like this, just beside the antenna, you can click turn on it and turn off, turn on and on and off. Yeah, and also it's like a, okay. Let's go to the next one. Uh, it's like you can you can rotate anti-clockwise and uh, clockwise and clockwise you can rotate this knob. Like you can control the volume based on your hand gesture simply. Okay, let's go back to the next one. It's like you can use your hand movement to do, just control this bar in that way or reverse the way. This is just a simple demonstration of like how we can use this uh, small detection of your hand movement to do some like uh, human machine interaction. Mm -hmm. To be honest, that was a better version of called the Google Solvi. They, they use the 60 gigahertz to do a very good like uh, like uh, very good recognition. But they are using 60 gigahertz. I'm using laptop. Yeah. This is the small radar in IC library. <coughs> so this is uh, the, the, the 60 gigahertz system in there. So this is the very small movement. But uh, I still think that like a uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal can achieve the same level of accuracy actually. So let's go. Uh, I think last uh, last year I showed this picture that we can use the Wi-Fi signal to detect the human breath, and it showed this offline processing. And this year we got some more results. We got like we use the uh, 20 megahertz uh, bandwidth uh, signal on the 900 megahertz uh, frequency point DSS various charging signal to detect the human breathing. And we now we make the system real time. So here is our signal signal source. Here is our receiving sensor. Here is our experimenter. It's breathing here. It shows our breathing curve in a lab. Actually, we can do this one through the wall because uh, this uh, wireless charging signal source have very strong signal. Actually, they have uh, at least two watt. I think. Sure. You should say to shine two watt on yourself. <laughs> of course, you can detect many things, but it's the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And yeah, I'm very worried true. about these two watt yeah. things. <laughs> and this one is like we detect the human human breathing, respiration, and I compare with the chest belt used in the clinic. So we can see they have this this signal from the different detection distance. We have very highly related uh, with the ground truth from the chest belt. And here is the FFT of the signal to see this, uh, frequent, this uh, breathing frequency is quite, uh, quite, it's quite uh, coincident based on two, two, two signal. It's from the ch chest belt and from the, from the Wi-Fi detect, from the wireless detection. Actually, I think Chen has another phase-based uh, version of the human respiration detection system and will be published on the radar conference this year. And uh, in this one, it's like we try to detect the uh, respiration from the different angle, and it shows that actually from from, from this this picture, we can, we can see that from the front side and the back side give the better detection, and from the left and right side give the worse. But it is very obvious actually. And uh, then we extend the idea uh, we, 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 because we, we found that we can use uh, the Wi-Fi beacon signal as the radar signal source because Wi-Fi wi beacon signal is very sparse. It only transmits 10 pulses per second. So that means we even the, the use the, this very sparse signal, we can still detect some uh, uh, oh some 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 some, some results. Actually, here is the. With Wi-Fi beacon without beacon synchronization on the DSI constellation, but we can see if we were applying if we were applying the um, with beacon sync, yeah, we, if we if we can sync the beacon, and we can we can see we can detect uh, some moving target here, and you, even if I apply the beacon sync and together with the with the with the direct signal uh, constellation, we can 
definitely detect the working person with the Wi-Fi beacon. That means no matter your Wi-Fi AP is transmitted signal or not, or in active state or maybe idle state, we can detect the activ activity. Based on this result, we're developing some ideas like this. For it is a bedroom, my student's bedroom. He, uh, <laughs> actually, we put a system in his bedroom. And, uh, and he's wearing the, uh, wearable devices to, to log the accelerometer data. And we can see that, uh, that the Wi-Fi passive detection result has highly related with the accelerometer uh, result. So that means we, if we can combine these two signals together, we can understand your daily activity, no matter you are using your Wi-Fi or not. So, so here is the here is the twenty four hour log of his life. <laughs> you can see it's like he sleep from the middle night, and uh, at in the morning he wake up. He wake up very late, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then he and then probably he is here is a small 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 activities we guess is from the neighbor is not in his his room, and then he go back home at drawing six p.m and probably cooking and have some quiet time and then probably, I don't know what he did during this like uh, two hour or three hour and, uh, it's a, it's a, and then we can classify his activity into different level and to see how much uh, how many times you are in, in activity level A how, much, how many times you fall into the activity level B or C and D so this one we put we give this 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 static this uh, like massively daily data to the, the machine learning guys to study the activity model of the man uh, of the people to link this data with the health condition of the people mm -hmm. so that's the healthcare uh, research in the Bristol so here is the what we do currently because uh, in my in my slides I showed lots of results based on the frequency, and my current work is trying to integrate the time information and space information together with the frequency to understand the more more detailed movement about like human activities happened indoor, and also currently we have like a, and in the modern in the modern society we have a like a IoT network, we have a Wi-Fi network, we have lots of like wireless networks. And from different angles, they are sending the streaming the signals to the data center, and they create a very like kind of uh, complex RF environment there. But actually, it's complex, but uh, also we can probably think about how to inter how to use this the uh, this massively signal from different uh, source to <coughs> to understand more about the the environment. And and potentially it will create some like cross discipline research, not only about the signal processing method, we are also involved with the with the machine learning method, system integration method and also the user experience design to make the technology can be used in the practical scenario and probably we are looking for more applications, not only constrained by the um, examples I've shown before. So here is my presentation. Thank you very much.